Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. So in today's video, I'm gonna show you the next iteration on the wheel strategy. So I finished up another wheel. We went ahead and sold the put. We got put the shares. We sold the call that expired. I got the shares called away. If you don't know what I'm talking about, check out some of these videos. It'll explain my wheel strategy and kind of what I'm up to. But what we had to do this week was restart the wheel, which involves selling a naked put. Now on Monday, the volatility in Novavax, is, which is the stock that I'm playing the wheel for, the volatility was not good. So I waited to see if there'd be a pullback, which might cause a slight bump up in implied volatility, which would in turn increase option prices and just make things maybe a little more frothy for selling the put. So nothing happened Monday, nothing happened Tuesday, and Wednesday morning I started to think, okay, is this not gonna happen this week? Cause I'd like to sell something, you know, between five and nine to 10 days out and get that initial 3% premium. And then on Wednesday, we got a slight peak or slight pump up in volatility in Novavax. I think the IV rank went up into the 13 handle. Once that happened, I dove in, I found a strike that I liked, and it ended up being an at the money put with only two days left, technically two and a half days, because I did this on Wednesday. So I wanna show you that position today. I wanna to dive into that and show you exactly what I sold. I wanted to go through the logic of why I sold this and kind of what the plan is. We're sitting right now with one day to go. As long as this expires tomorrow, then I'll just rinse and repeat the next week. If it doesn't, I have a little different approach to this. I'm not gonna take the shares. I'm actually gonna roll out and down and I wanna to explain to you why I wanna do this. We'll jump into it all right now, but let's dive into the charts. Okay, we're in our old trusty Tastyworks trading platform. If you don't have a Tastyworks platform, but you want one, go ahead and drop down into the description of this video. There will be a link. I'll get a, uh, a credit for it and the channel will benefit and I greatly appreciate that. So thank you on the front end. So we're looking at Novavax and you can see the chart here. I kind of want to walk through and just catch you up a little bit on, on what's been happening. I recommend going back and watching my last wheel video. I can put that in the description as well. But if I come in here in the last, I'll put 60 days up here, but you can see what I did last time was, I went ahead and you can see right here this June 25th, 175 call. Let's start there. I just wanna talk a little bit about this. This was the call that I sold once I got assigned the share. So the history of this is I sold a put and collected a credit and then we moved forward and the price action actually the, the contract expired and it expired below 175 it was actually 174.41 i think is where we ended up so i got assigned those shares so i then had to buy 100 shares of novavax at 175. then i went ahead and sold the 175 call and collected as you can see here five dollars and it was just a four day option contract. So I was gonna wait till Friday. And on Friday, the price was very much above 175. So I got the shares called away at 175 and I kept the credit of $5. So now I have nothing. I had no shares, no puts, no calls, everything was done. So that was a full revolution of the wheel. So now what we have to do is we have to sell that put in order to, to reinitiate a new wheel. So what we did was we started watching it this week and we weren't getting much action because volatility was pretty low. Now you can see right here, the IV rank is 6.5. Novavax was actually double that just on Wednesday, which was, <laughs> which was yesterday. So it's kind of crazy how, how sensitive it's being right now. It's, it's kind of been up and down. Um, you have to kind of watch it and be familiar with it. And this is why it's kind of a nice deal to pick out a handful of stocks and watch them because if you're familiar with Novavax and you know that its volatility gets pretty frothy premium and starts feeling good if you get above maybe 13 or 14 percent, then you kind of know that 6.5 rank here is maybe not that great. Maybe we should wait a little longer. So anyway, I got a 13 rank. I went ahead and sold it. And if I come to my activity panel here, you can see I went ahead and sold the 210 put. There's one day remaining and I sold it for $5.25. So 
So right now you can see all the credits that I've collected on my wheel strategy since I started on June 4th. So just to review on June 4th, I sold a $5.10 credit put, which was $510. And then I got put the shares, or no, I did not get put the shares. It expired worthless. So then we just rinsed and repeated. We sold the 175 put for $515 on June 18th. That's the one that expired below 175. So I got put the shares. So then I went ahead and I sold the 175 call on my shares and collected $500. Then the price went above 175. I got those shares called away. So then on Wednesday, I went ahead on, on June 2nd and sold the, for $525. I sold the 210 put. And there's now just one day remaining. And we'll see if we can get an expiration out of it. My guess is we're looking, you know, we're looking pretty good, but I want to talk about kind of my logic as to why I sold such an aggressive put, because a lot of you know that when we come into the options chain, I'll go, you know, a few days out and I typically like to target this 30, this 30 Delta, meaning there's a 70% chance that my option contract will expire worthless. It's kind of a way to mitigate my risk. And this time I was really close. I was selling, um, this one, this part of the chain, but with three days or two and a half days left. And I went right to the money. I sold the 210. And the reason, and when I say at the money, some people don't know what that means. And at the money, that just simply means that you're selling an option contract just below where the price is for a put. So in the case of Novavax, if you sold the 215 put, the price is 214 right now. So that would be considered right at the money. And then if it goes above 215, which is above your strike, you'd be considered in the money. So right now I've got the 210 put and the 210, if I go ahead and just draw a quick line on here. And let's go ahead and just put that right about, right about 210 right there. And let's make an exact 210. There we go. So that line right there is where the price has to stay above by tomorrow afternoon, by the time the market closes, so that I can have this expire worthless. And then I just keep the premium, the $525. So right now you can see we're looking pretty good. Um, this morning, Novavax actually dropped down and pushed, I think down to 208. Let's see what the low was real quick. The low on this one was 207.50 it dropped to. So we were in the money briefly this morning. And then it came back out and now it's been pushing higher and we're close to 215, about 214.50 right now. And let's look at the exact position here. So here's my Novavax position. If I open it up, you can see it's the July 2nd, one day to go, 210 put. And I sold it for $5.25. We're up almost 70% on it. We're up $365. So if I close this right now, I would have to pay the difference between 525 and 365 to close the position. So let me just mock it up for you. Let me just show you. So I could close this right now for probably a dollar sixty. I would pay a dollar sixty, and then that would allow me to keep the remainder of the credit that I kept. Now that's a great approach, and a lot of people do that, and I like how that works because that allows people to consistently take profits quickly. But for the real strategy. I'm okay getting put the shares typically, so I let things run to expiration because everything I'm doing is cash secured. There won't be any surprises for me, and I'm also trading very small, just one contract at a time. So with this position, if we get below 210, I've decided that I'm going to roll out and down, and I'm gonna show you what that means here. The reason for that is because it was aggressive. Normally I sell the 30 delta, which would be you know, right here, but instead of selling that 30 delta this time, instead I sold right at the money. So I sold something like this. So a lot more risk, a lot more or a greater chance of being put the shares. So I wanted to give myself the ability to roll out and down, collect another credit, and just stay very tight in terms of expiration date. I like to play between that two days and 10 days. It's a really nice sweet spot for me. So I'm gonna mock this up and show you what'll happen. Let's say we drop below 210. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna to go to quick roll and I'm basically gonna look in here and say, okay, what can I collect? What can I do to defend this position? Because as options traders, this is sort of the scenario that you, 
that you find yourself in and really that you want to be in because defending positions is an opportunity to collect more credits and to sort of give yourself more time to be right. And when I say be right, I mean just having price be above $210. So right now you can see down here, if I roll from June 2nd to June 9th, that goes from one day I would roll out to eight days, which is incredible, especially given that we're gonna have Saturday, Sunday, and Monday with no action. This is basically a five-day contract. I can collect $4.40 right now if I do nothing. Now the benefit of this is, I collect this credit and you can basically say let's peel that off of your cost basis. So cost basis reduction is what I'm accomplishing with this. The problem is if Novavax decides to take a really big dive, if it gets too far away from me, then when I'm rolling for these credits, they're going to diminish. They're going to become less and less and less. So there's a fine art between collecting credits and staying with the stock. You want to stay in its neighborhood. If it gets too far away from you, you could have problems. And that's the reason why I play such a close game with the expiration dates is because let's say with one day to go, Nova Vax drops $20 a share and it's going to expire there. Well, what I can easily do is say, okay, I wanted it to stay above 210, but now it's at 190. I could just roll down to 190 and I could bump out one more week. So I could roll out 15 days, roll down to 190 to catch up to the stock, and I could still collect a $1.12 credit. So you can see how mobile these naked puts are. Now, I probably wouldn't be that aggressive with it if it dropped to 190, because that's a pretty big drop, but I might be tempted to roll down to maybe 197.50 and stay at June 9th. Well, that's a little light credit, so probably wouldn't do that. So what I would do is I would definitely roll out to the 16th and I would maybe roll down, maybe I would just roll down to 200 and see what happens. Collect 385, roll down $10, so essentially saving myself a $1,000 risk, and then wait the next week and see what happens. And then as we get into next week, let's say there's eight days remaining and it decides to drop to 180. Well, then I can say, okay, let's roll down to 190. I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna add some more time to it. Maybe I roll out to 29 days, which I guess technically would be 22 days, so let's do that. Collect another 325 and roll down another $10. So you just wanna stay in the ballpark without overdoing it. When I first started trading options, I would get a little antsy and I would dive right to the current price of the stock, only to have that stock then rally back higher and then I'm stuck for a few weeks waiting on this thing after it's gone well above me. So I like to be very gentle with my rolls. I don't like to dive in and get crazy with it. I like to know that if the stock takes a big dive, the chances are it's gonna have a slight rebound. It's not gonna just lurch down every day forever. So I like to lag a little bit behind it, but I like to stay within the ballpark. That way I can keep rolling the position and keep collecting credits because remember, if you're committing this capital, you want to be able to collect weekly credits and you don't want to collect $15, $20. You want to be collecting two, three, four hundred dollars at a time. So you just got to find that fine balance between what strike you can roll to and what expiration date can you go out to without having to wait too long. Because if you get overextended, I've had positions in the past where I rolled out and down and got away from a position so that I could manage it and I rolled out to like 60 days, 70 days. Well, once you do that, then you're just waiting because if the stock drops again, you'd have to roll out half a year or three quarters of a year because then the strike availability becomes fewer and fewer. So it's just harder to defend a position once you let it get too far away from you in terms of expiration as well as too far away from you in terms of price action. There is definitely science to trading options, but there's also an art to it. You have to be able to gently adjust positions and not overdo things or else you get stuck in a lot of weird scenarios. So. This is my second full wheel that we're starting. I'm going to keep you updated on how this goes. Clearly tomorrow there's going to be something happening, so expect another video in this wheel series very soon. I hope this video helped. Um, if you want to support the channel, grab a membership, hit the join button on the main page of the YouTube channel, and then send me an email at takingtrades at gmail.com. Once you click that join button, because I will send you an invite to our private Slack group, which is super cool. So come join us. Hope this video was helpful. 
If you're new, subscribe. If you've been around a while, hit that like button, and I'll see you in the next video.